Thanks to our magnificent brains, most of us live out our lives under the delusion that we are in control. But are our brains truly in control? Makes you think, doesn't it? Engrossed in the thrilling cinematic exploits of their ancestors, the freelance police have had no time to ponder these eternally vexing questions. But in mere moments, they and you will be plunged headfirst into these murky philosophical depths when Sam returns from his ill-timed bathroom break to discover they stole Max's brain. Max? Little buddy? No, 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 no! What happened? Hey! What happened to Max? Talk! We don't know! One second we were guarding the devil's toy box, then BAM! Out went the lights! Through a fog of rage, darkness, and raisinets, I tried to remember what Flint Paper told me about interrogating suspects. Rule number one, don't let the suspect control the conversation. Get him talking, then surprise him, interrupt him with a question, or call him a liar, freak him out! And if all else fails, bring little Miss Persuasion out for a stroll. Actually, I think it was more of a boom, really. Really? Because I distinctly heard it more like a bam. What are you talking about? The Devil's Toy Box! It's a source of horrible, terrible power! And now it's gone! We're doomed! Doomed! Stop doing that! What else can you tell me? Well, that's the last thing we remember until you woke us up and started snarling at us. Um, yeah, that's the last thing we remember. Rule number two, timing is everything. When you hear the suspect lying, that's when you jump in and accuse him. Yup, I was totally unconscious the whole time. I certainly didn't see anything interesting, no siree Bob. <laughs> Liar! All right, all right. I came to before, Jebediah, just in time to hear the telltale sounds of a brain being removed from a bunny. Obadiah, why didn't you do anything? I was afraid. Afraid that he'd remove my brain, too. Who? Who took Max's brain? It was the space gorilla. Skunk Abe. Of course. He must have been released from the penal zone when the toy box was stolen. I'm so sorry. Not half as sorry as that brain-stealing space ape's gonna be when I catch up with him. Rule number three, mole men are easy. To crack the tough nuts, you'll need information to prove your case. Sometimes you gotta ask around to get the dirt on the doers. Now, go get them.
I wrote a mental note to thank Flint at Max's funeral and got ready to squeeze some punks. General Skunky. I should have known. That space ape had wanted Max's brain ever since he found out it was special. Now that special brain was gone, and I was cut loose, drifting in the neon current, hoping for a lucky break. Hello, ugly. You! You're one of Skunk Ape's goons! Where's your boss? What did he do to my little buddy? I don't know. I haven't seen General Skunk copy since you unjustly imprisoned him in the penal zone. I'll never forget his final terrified howl as it echoed across the dimensional boundaries. What are you talking about? Don't you remember when you and your partner defeated my leader, the magnificent General Skunk by trapping him in the penal zone? Oh yeah, that. So? As I was saying... Since Skunkapi's imprisonment, I've been reevaluating my life choices. I've abandoned violence for a career as a science spinner. It's a very fulfilling, low-temperature job, more suited to a space age. Reevaluating your life choices? What does that even mean? Skunkapi's defeat made me take a really hard look at myself. Honestly, is there anything more pathetic than a middle-aged space gorilla waving his blaster around the galaxy like? Some kind of teenager? How about a dead partner? The only way to break the cycle was to just walk away. Now I have a wonderful job as a sign spinner and a girlfriend in the village, and I don't even have to shoot anyone. How nice for you. But enough about me. You should uh, talk to the rat. Yes, the rat. He certainly seems plugged into the ins and outs of this gloriously filthy metropolis. Rat? What rat? Frankie the rat. He traffics in stolen merchandise and tawdry gambling rings. Where can I find him? He hangs out on the corner of Vinny and Vidi in the Latin Quarter. <laughs> Frankie the Rat. The name left a bad taste on my tongue and an itchy sensation in my boxers. Still, there wasn't a road more plugged into the bad wiring in the city. Hey, rat. Sam, uh, buddy, uh, how's it hanging? My partner's got a bad case of a missing brain, and someone thinks you might know something about it. A uh, brain, huh? Uh, well, I did see something unusual and brain-related a little while back. Spill! I was given directions to a confused tourist. Poor fellow was wandering around in circles, scaring all the kitties with his umlauts and tvortis knocks and whatnot. Where? Hey, take it easy, big fella. I sent him right over that away, about two miles. Frankie the Rat helping a tourist? It was absurd. Absurd like Max was, back when he had a brain. So imagine my surprise when I found Frankie's tourist wandering around the bad side of town. You, foreign guy, what's your story? Ooh, an American police shakedown. How thrilling. Yeah, it's a real honor. Now, what do you know? Well, 
About an hour ago, I was getting directions to the museum district from one of your colorful local rats. And Frankie sent you here? Yeah. That dirty lion rat. You know, back in Europe, I had so many warnings about your country's rats, but this Frankie was so gracious and helpful. Museum district? See, si, yeah. As a child in Europe, I always dreamt of visiting your city's famous museum district with its Institute of Incomplete Technologies and uh, Hall of Filthy Arts. It's a little more underwhelming than it appeared in my schulbooks. Any flugen? I was about to give him a tip for the help, when all of a sudden a Weltraumliebe Wachtzauberkrieg erupted in the middle of one of your asphalt fjords. At least I think it was a Weltraumliebe Wachtzauberkrieg. It might have been more of an öde- Ultra super color what now? A Weltraumliebe Wachtzauberkrieg. My people's word for a stunning battle between a strangely garbed man and an alien space gorilla carrying a brain in a jar. <sighs> so, where was I? Oh, yes! After the fight moved on, I discovered that someone had picked my pockets, leaving me empty-handled and ipple-skippled in a strange land. I left the scene of the crime, carrying nothing but the clothes on my back. You know what else? I'm starting to think that this isn't actually the museum district. What? Ipple-skippled! It's a common European word that describes the feeling of my disorientation combined with nagging doubts about a rat. Honestly, what do they teach you Americans in your schools? Video poker! So... What else would you like to know? People in this country are so intense! The tourists seemed like just another victim circle in the drain, but I knew there was more to the story. It was time to circle back and flush out the truth. What do you know? I was given directions to a confused tourist. To the museum district? Yeah. Poor fellow was wandering around in circles, scaring all the kiddies with his umlauts and twatties knocks. Don't lie to me, Frankie. I talked to your tourist, and it looks to me like you sent him over to the wrong side of town to get rolled by your rat pack. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But this conversation is over. I ain't saying nothing till I get some legal representation. Annoy for some people, trampling a rat's God-given merengue rights. There ought to be a law or something. Do you want a lawyer? Here's an attorney from Smith & Wesson. Okay, okay, I'll talk, I'll talk. Sheesh. Like you guessed, I gave the tourist directions to the bad side of town, but I was just winding them up, really. Hey, ask me, the schmuck deserved it. Acting all high and mighty in Europe. What happened next? When the big fight broke out, me, the tourist, and the other gorilla ducked down behind the crate, and I, uh, picked their pockets. The tourist was loaded with high exchange- Other gorilla? What other gorilla? Believe it or not, it was another space ape. He was spinning a sign for some pet store, the poor schlub. So, that dirty punk sign spinner did see Skunk Ape. Anyway, after the fight moved on, the tourist got a nice souvenir for his trouble, and I skedaddled back here. And that's all I know, honest. Souvenir? Yeah, uh, something fell out of the funny hat guy's pocket, and the tourist scooped it up. What was it? I don't know, uh, something. So, the tourist didn't leave empty-handed after all. So what now? Stick around. I may be back. I shall count the minutes. A repeat performance. Let's run through it one more time and speak slowly. I'm an American. As I said before, about an hour ago, I was getting directions to the museum district from one of your colorful local rats. You know, back in Europe, I had so many. Then what? I was about to give him a tip for the help when all of a sudden a Weltraumliebe Wachtzauberkrieg erupted in the middle of one of your asphalt fjords. At least I think it was a better leap of Hurry it up! After the fight moved on, I discovered that someone had picked my pockets, leaving me empty-handled and ipple-skippled in a strange land. I left the scene of the crime, carrying nothing but the clothes on my back. You know what else? I'm stuck- Don't play innocent with me, metric lover. The rat saw you pick up something after the fight. Now spill! Yeah, yeah, it's true! I took a souvenir from the fight. I didn't think anyone would notice. Here! Norrington! 
Who the heck is Norrington? I don't know, I don't know. Just don't hurt me. You Americans are all animals. Animals. Finally, a clue. Norrington. The name rang fewer bells than a sleigh in July. Fortunately, it didn't need to. Crimetron, do your stuff! What do you mean, not found in database? The Crimetron requires additional clues to make an informed deduction. Clues? I haven't got time for clues. Max's body is starting to smell. Differently. Then maybe you should stop yelling at my girlfriend and start with the clue hyphen finding. <laughs> The gorilla was lying to me about seeing Skunky. I wondered what else he was lying about. I'm back! Now where's Skunk Ape? I don't know. I haven't seen General Skunk Ape since you unjustly imprisoned him in the penal zone. Never forget his final terrified howl. That story ain't gonna wash, Bonzo. Your pal Frankie told me all about how you and he hid from a fight between Skunk Ape and some other guy. Now make with a lip flapping and I better like what I hear. It's, it's true. A few of your Earth minutes ago, I was spinning my sign for Frankie the Rat and a tourist when General Skunk Ape came running down the street chasing after a strangely garbed man. To my everlasting shame, I cowered behind a crate like a common Venusian bonobo as the general and his prey skirmished. Strangely garbed? Yes, a man in a faded jacket and a strange hat. He seemed to be carrying a box of some sort. General Skunkapi was in hot pursuit. <sighs> after the general and the stranger fled the scene, I discovered that he had dropped this. I'm surprised he didn't come back for it, but he appeared to be in something of a hurry. What's that? A brain remover? I believe it's one of the toys of power that my general has been collecting for the past 25 Crylex. I knew that. Give me that toy. No! I need it to get back in General Skunkapi's good graces. Once I return this artifact to the General, he'll forgive my temporary abandonment of his goals and welcome me back to his crew with open arms. Oh, how I've come to miss standing at my General's side these past few hours. I wonder if he'll promote me. Huh. You're fooling yourself, kid. What are you talking about? The only thing Skunk Ape's gonna welcome you with is a fistful of phasers. You can't go home again. You can't even get on the porch. You've tasted the apple, peed in the pool, bitten the hand that rocks the cradle. You're a sign spinner to him now, and that's all you're ever gonna be. You're right. It's hopeless. No matter what I do now, I'll never soar through the galaxy at my general's side ever again. And I hate to tell you, but you're not a very good sign spinner either. I hated to see a grown gorilla cry, so I got in the car and looked for another lost soul to join me as I gazed into the abyss. The last time we saw the rhinoplasty toy, Max's special brain used it to turn into a bazooka. Now it was going to lead me to the guy who stole that special brain. It wasn't exactly ironic, but I didn't care. Okay, Crimetron, this is your last chance before I start looking for an upgrade. Come on, you obsolete hunk of junk. Talk! We're Skunk Ape! Sam, no! Stop holding out on me! Get away from her, you brute. Finally. Audiences across the country say, you're a monster, Sam. What have you become? The Museum of Mostly Natural History. 
the tarnished jewel of the city's once thriving museum district. Max and I always meant to visit, but we'd never gotten around to it. Now we were finally going to take in its thrilling and dubiously educational displays with a vengeance. Skunky, it's time to pay the piper, plus tax and applicable service fees. Hang tight, little buddy. Hang tight, little buddy. It's a telltale trail of Grandpa Stinky's brain-preserving demon broth. Could Max's brain still be alive? I'll take a look around after I track down Max's brain. Grandson of the Potroon who put the kibosh on my intricate plan to unleash Yog Sagoth and take over the world? I hate that guy. I hate that guy! Yes, yes! A common enemy. I propose an alliance. You get the galaxy, I get the Earth? Agreed! Nice going, Bubble Brain. Don't blame me. I'm still trying to find the volume controls on this thing. Minions, after him! Sam? Aw, oh, man! Now I'm stuck in here with the alliance of C-list supervillains. Ah, it was way more fun when they were fighting. Hey, bad guys! How about a little light show? It's getting boring in here. I'm afraid that tonight's performance of Mundane Objects in Space, A Cosmic Odyssey, has been cancelled, so that the Yeneler and I might use the projector to summon the scattered psychic toys from the four corners of the globe. Aww. I guess no one's gonna be able to enjoy the classic combination of dubious astronomy and classic 70s rock until I break up these BFFs. Look at all those cool psychic toys! Am I doing that? Indeed, yes. Your psychic brain, melded to Monsieur Paperweight Sorcery and my super science, have created a techno-arcanic whirlpool, drawing the toys to this convenient container. So that explains the giant sucking sound in my head. No, that's just you. Come to Max, you dangerous little psychic toys! What's that for? That controls our new laser light show. It will bring many, many young people to the museum. If you can lure them away from their zoetropes. Come to... Is that an espresso machine? Because I've always wanted to pour caffeine directly into my brain. This device is used to maintain the complex matrix of energies between the Devil's Toy Box, your magnificent brain, and Paperweight's Chaos Magic, and funnel them into the planetarium's crude projector. Fascinating. Now tell me more about my magnificent brain! For 
convenience, I lumped supervillain devices into two categories. Ones that I've broken, and ones that I haven't broken yet. Hey, Skunky! Yes? So, long time no see. Long time? Yes, yes. If only you knew how long. It has been but a handful of Earth hours since you and your companion imprisoned me in the penal zone. <laughs> However, due to the temporal phase shifting of the zone, I experienced years of maddening nothingness during those fleeting hours. Ah, that would explain the tiny crow's feet around the eyes. Not to mention that telltale old gorilla smell. What are you doing here, anyway? The same thing I was doing all those years ago. Boring me to tears? Gathering the toys of power so that I might conquer the galaxy. What are you two scamps doing with the devil's toy box? We're tapping the nigh infinite power of your brain to create a bifurcated vortex of technological and arcane energies to impel the toys of power to return to their point of origin via a five-dimensional matrix of quantum foam and sympathetic magics. Yes, of course! You have no idea what I just said, do you? No, but if it means more psychic toys for me, then vortex away! Now that you and Fezhead have stopped fighting, could you tell me how my brain ended up outside my sexy little body? I took it from you after I was suddenly ejected from the penal zone. How come I didn't notice? You appeared to be entranced by a primitive form of Earth entertainment. Around here, we call it a popcorn coma, big guy. What are you planning to do with my brain once this whole Toys for Jerks drive is over? The same thing I planned to do before you yanked me into your ASAT's penal zone. Plug your brain into my ship's central computer and use your terrifying psychic powers to conquer the galaxy. Couldn't we just use them to cruise for chicks? The ladies love a good spoon bending. That's curious. My scans indicate you don't even like girls. Could you try not to kill Sam? He's my designated driver whenever I'm in the sauce like this. Oh, my minions won't kill him. That's good. They're under strict orders to drag him beaten and bloodied to my feet, so that he might witness my ascension to ruler of the galaxy. Just so long as he can still drive. Why are you working with that creepy paperweight guy? Monsieur Paperweight and I have reached an accommodation. Is that legally permitted in this state? I'm lending my scientific prowess to his mystical efforts to draw the toys of power into the so-called Devil's Toy Box. That spell thing Paperweight's working on. It wouldn't have something to do with summoning an elder god by the name of Yog Sagoth, would it? Now that you mention it, Yog Sagoth's name did come up once or twice. He's certainly touchy about that precious tapestry of his. Yes. I see you've got your old band of lackeys back together. Yes, yes. My mighty army is once again ready to take on the galaxy. At least they would be if Paperweight's filthy security guard wasn't underfoot. That disease-carrying insect had better keep his pestilent thorax away from my boys. Uh, could you go over there for a while? The way you're salivating over my anterior cortex is creeping me out, frankly. Very well. What is it? How come you haven't aged a day since my great-grandpa kicked your demon-summoning butt back in the olden times? The horrible secret of my apparent immortality is too terrible to comprehend, and would surely drive an uninitiated mind such as yours to the brink of madness were I to utter it. So, Pilates then? What are you doing in this two-bit museum anyway? Since my defeat at the hands of your meddling ancestors, I've insinuated myself into the archaeological community, painstakingly gathering the requisite toys of power necessary to reopen a doorway between our world and the realm of Yogg-Sagoth. Nerd. What are you and Corporal Buttcheeks here doing with the Devil's Toy Box anyway? 
We're unwinding and rewiring the synapses of your brain to cast a blasphemous net of tech necromancy across the reality so that the toys of power may be properly encased within the devil's toy box. Ah, that's about what I thought. Really? Repeat what I just said. Blah, blah, blah. I've got a wonderful brain! Blargy, blargy, more toys for me! You're a magical mumbo-jumbo guy, so maybe you can tell me. What's the deal with me having psychic powers all of a sudden? Am I going through... the change? It's difficult to say. The only minds on this plane capable of wielding the toys of power are the insane, the simple, or the defective. Ah, <laughs> you've been reading my press kit. But encountering two special brains in the same bloodline is practically unheard of. Your lineage is most peculiar and dangerous. You should see us during holiday cookouts. Could you try and stop your new buddy from zapping Sam with a banana-shaped ray gun or whatever? Why should I give a hell beast's hangnail about the fate of Summit's brood? Well, I, uh... <clears throat> Let me get back to you on that. Why are you and that big dumb ape skunk ape working together? General Skunkape and I have had a meeting of minds over our mutual loathing of you, your partner, and your forefathers. So that added up to what? One mind between you? I just hope his brain-dead minions can dispose of your partner without injuring any of my employees. Pretty grubby joint you got here. It's one of the finest collections in the world. Our young Sogoth tapestry is one of a kind. Gee, it'd be a shame if Skunk Ape's minions ripped your tapestry to shreds and used it for space towelettes. You know, accidentally. Yeah, don't even think of such a thing. <laughs> oh, this talking with my brain is making me tired. Let's talk later. <laughs> These two goofs are about as entertaining as public radio. Oh, I sure hope Sam survived the attack of the minions. I've got a lot of complaining to do. Well, at least I know that Max's brain is still alive and kicking. I'll never get back in there while Skunk Ape and Paperweight are working together. Maybe I can break up those lovebirds from out here. This gun was made for shooting. That's just what it'll do. One of these days this gun is gonna shoot all over you. Bang, 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 bang. Somehow I doubt they're gonna lure in the jaded thugs of today with laser light shows. Not enough despinings to hold a young person's attention. That's interesting. Holy Oak, Massachusetts. If I remember my field guide for otherworldly incursions correctly, that tentacle's a flagellum from the Dark Dimension. I better not get too close to that thing. I could end up in some other dimension where the laws of physics are inside out, or radio stations are dominated by folk music, or some other nightmarish claw-your-eyes-out scenario. Hey, you! Who? Me? Don't get killed with me, wise guy. What are you doing in the museum after dark? I'm Sam. I'm with the Freelance Police. Freelance Police, eh? I heard a lot about you guys. A lot. I'm Sal, museum security guard. You must be looking into all the freaky shenanigans going on around here tonight, huh? Yeah. Well, feel free to poke around. But right now you gotta do something about this pile of trash. That's not trash. That's my partner. Partner, trash, potato, potato. If it's not up and moving in the next few minutes, I'm tossing that smelly lump of guts into the incinerator. Incinerator? Yeesh. Sal! Keep it down, will ya? This is a museum, not a locker room. Sal, why is that name so familiar? Wait a minute. Stinkies used to have a fry cook named Sal. Yep, that'd be me. A six-foot-tall cockroach working at Stinkies? That's shocking! 
No, wait. What's that thing that's the complete opposite of shocking? So why did Grandpa Stinky fire you? I mean, aside from the whole disease-carrying vermin thing. He, uh, didn't approve of a cockroach in the kitchen. That's strange. Grandpa Stinky never had problems with cockroaches before. Nice headphones. Listening to the game? Or maybe some black flag? Now these are my official Museum Guard emergency headphones. I gotta wear these so that Mr. Paperweight can tell me where to go in case of a security emergency. Of course, I haven't heard from him in a while. He must be busy up there with that space gorilla guy. Don't look now, but there's a scandalously clad intergalactic despot running roughshod through your museum. You mean General Skunkape? He's an A1 buttwad, all right. But what are you gonna do? Mr. Paperweight's rolled out the red carpet for him and his minions. Don't you think you should alert the authorities? What? Lose my job? How's life with Skunk Ape? Skunk Ape. <laughs> That's a good one. I'll have to remember that. Not so bad. Aside from the big gorilla over there guarding the door, most of these apes just hang out in the planetarium. What's with all the apes running around? Beats me. Mr. Paperweight told me to steer clear of it. Well, that's what I'm gonna do. Would you mind not throwing my little buddy into the museum's incinerator? What can do, Sam? If Mr. P finds another corpse strewn about all willy-nilly on the exhibit floor, he's gonna kick my thorax right to the unemployment office. You say your friend's still alive? You better get him moving. Would you mind not throwing my little buddy into the museum's incinerator? What can do, Sam? If Mr. P finds another corpse strewn about all willy-nilly on the exhibit floor, he's gonna kick my thorax right to the unemployment office. You say your friend's still alive? You better get him moving. But he hasn't got a brain. Well, maybe you should find him a new one. Sheesh. Some detective you are. Any idea what that paperweight loser is doing in the planetarium? Hey, don't be calling Mr. Paperweight a loser. He's a stand-up guy who took me in and gave me a job. He's not here, you know. Nah, I got no idea what that loser's up to. Heck, I can't even understand half the things he tells me over the headphones. Your boss is gathering demonic toys for a nefarious purpose. Toys, eh? And what do you want me to do about it? Call the army, the navy, the Swiss guard. You want me to turn on my boss? Dream on, buddy. This is a pretty cushy job here. And I ain't messing it up over a bunch of demonic toys. See ya, Sal. Be careful out there, Sam. This place is cooker tonight. The Commissioner frowns on wasting bullets on people that don't technically need to be shot. That fellow reminds me of my great-granduncle Eustatius. Canis erectus. This freakish tooth, dating from the late Fumerian era, is thought to represent an evolutionary dead end of heavyset man-dog hybrids. This night was bad enough, but now my distant ancestors are getting insulted by pasty-faced anthropologists. The end of the world is predicted by top apocalypsologists. Some say the world will end in fire, some in ice, but it takes a truly advanced mind to envision an apocalypse that revolves around a many-eyed, many-horned, walking purple people-eater. I better find a way to get Max's body moving before Sal chucks it into an incinerator. It's a telltale trail of Grandpa Stinky's brain-preserving demon broth. Poyosaurus Henway. Earth Dog Man, where do you think you're going? I'm uh, just looking for the snack foods exhibit. No one leaves here. Skunkape's orders. Why? We're supposed to be on the lookout for, uh, Sam. That's it, Sam. Uh, are you Sam? No, my name is, uh, Tyrone. Sam's that guy. Tis we. I've arrived at the world-famous Museum of Mostly Natural History. And look, a cute little animatronic monkey. Mahila de Skunkape, I've successfully neutralized the one known as Sam. Describe him. Hey, hairless. Difficult to place accent. That's not Sam, you fool. Now don't bother.
bother me again until you find Sam. Apparently that uh, wasn't Sam. Oh well, uh, happy hunting. Thank you, Tyrone. Hey, guard guy. Don't bother me, Tyrone. I've got to keep a lookout for Sam. Right. I'll just let you get back to that. Your primitive projectile weapons are useless against my dense alien hide, Earthspawn. None shall pass. Gotta love the classics. It's too bad Max's mighty psychic brain isn't here. There's all sorts of new phone numbers on this courtesy phone. Museum of Mostly Natural History Guided Tour. Ah, an audio guide that attempts to make sense of the nonsensical museum displays. I should tape one of these for our office. Welcome to the Museum of Mostly Natural History. My name is Anton Pepperweight, and I'll be your narrator on this self-guided tour today. Let us begin. Please make your way to the Melozoic Era exhibit in the center of the main floor. Although it lasted for only seven weeks during the late summer of 56 million BC, the Melozoic Era produced an incredible explosion of evolutionary diversity, most of which was quickly erased by less ridiculous creatures. Gently yank the bone to hear the roar of the Poyosaurus Henway. I'd better reunite Max's body with his brain, or a plausible facsimile, before Sal tosses it into an incinerator. Tapestry of Yog Sagoth, overfiend of the dank dimensions, on loan from the East Village chapter of the Knights of Yog Sagoth. He doesn't look so tough. Behold, the dread wonder of Yog Sagoth, overfiend of the dark dimension. Yeah. I'm glad my great grandpa stopped that transdimensional beauty from manifesting in the east side. Hey, it's a Moai head. How's it hanging, big guy? Fine. Be that way. How'd you get here from Easter Island, buddy? He's probably sleeping off a basalt binge. Inexplicable object of unknown provenance. To witness the final stage of the coming apocalypse, turn the hourglass. Okay... Whoa, I did not see that coming. Although the Hindenburg met its fiery demise in 1937, its sister ship, the Aeroshwine, is still in operation today and was a stunt double in the 1968 musical, Let's All Go For A Ride In My Beautiful Balloon. So that's where that song came from. Coming soon, a brief history of bad ideas in transportation. I hope Max's brain and body are reunited by the time this exhibit opens. He loves tooling around in comically unviable vehicles. Good thing Max isn't here. Edutainment sends him into an atavistic rage. I could learn a lot from this, if I wasn't so offended by the choice of fonts. Spunks. I can almost smell it. 
Seriously, it smells like Aspen here. Ooh, boy, you have dangerous. Two of my favorite things. Max would love to get his hands on this doohickey. Too bad he doesn't have any hands right now. Ancient Egyptian brain screw. The engravings on this particular brain screw indicate that it was reserved for pharaohs, viziers, or other high-ranking muckety mucks. Muckety mucks? The museum's copywriter must have thought no one would read that far. Hey, it's me. Give or take 4,000 years and a decent tailor. If you're going to putrefy and decompose, might as well do it in style. Ancient Egypt was so madcap. The seven-sided pyramid of Hikaba was the crowning glory of Kestimpum the Tiny until it collapsed under its staggering weight and unorthodox design. Please proceed to the treasures of the forgotten pharaoh exhibit. The museum is proud to have recently obtained the preserved remains of the mysterious forgotten pharaoh of ancient Egypt. Now, walk the eyes to see an ancient, brutal civilization spring to life. Normally, the code of the freelance policeman frowns on stealing ancient brains. But desperate times call for icky measures. Ew, it's warm and pulsing and wriggly. I don't know whether to be repulsed or use it as a neck massager. Most of the brains I carry around in my jacket are a lot less warm and pulsing. I bet this thing would fire right up if I stuck it in a body. giving this away to just anybody. Hey, Cell, look! Three monkeys violating that statue of a head. Where? I didn't see nothing. Which is a good thing, since we put all the monkeys down in storage with a leather jacket. Maybe this carefully preserved gray matter will get Max's body moving, or at least twitching and drooling unnervingly. Hello? Anybody in there? Torments of Osiris will be laid upon your feet, heretics! The wrath of the... Uh, Anubis! Nah, but I get that a lot. I'm Sam. And it's so energetic! That's probably one of Max's sugar rushes. You'll just want to ride him out until you get used to him. Well, I suppose you want some sort of tedious boon in return for rescuing our spirit from the shadowy realms, yes? Well, if it's not too much trouble, Your Majesty, I could use some help retrieving Max's brain from a couple of world-conquering Nimrods. I believe we can aid you in your quest. But where will my brain go after we've restored this Max? Hmm. Well, if everything goes as planned, I suppose you can take your pick between an ethnic sorcerer and a super-powered space gorilla. A gorilla? <gasps> that does sound promising. Very well, we shall grant your boon. It shouldn't be too much trouble with all these toys of the gods secreted in this fuzzy little body. Toys of the gods? Do you have the gift? Is that what they're calling it these days? My people always called it the Curse of Horus. Ungrateful wretches. Neat. If you've got creepy brain powers, this rescue's gonna be a walk in the park. Ready to roll? Lead on, barbarian. Your Highness? Yes? How'd a kid like you get to become Pharaoh? Did your daddy Pharaoh die when you were young? Oh no, our dad was a sandal maker. 
We became feral after we stumbled upon the toys of the gods while stealing coins from a tomb. The toys awakened latent abilities within us, granting us the power to cast the royal family into the Nile and reshape the entire kingdom in our now divine image. Now there's a heartwarming rags to riches story. If the toys made you so powerful, how'd you end up as a pickled brain in a jar? During our reign, there were always a few troublemakers who, impervious to our divine powers, rebelled against our benevolent but firm dictates. We suspect one of them finally snuck past our defenses. Hold any grudges? Sam, that's all in the past. Even if we did hold an eternal grudge against the mystery assassins who deposed us all those centuries ago, it's not as if we can do anything about it now, right? Uh, right. So, Your Highness, you impressed by the 21st century yet? Oh, most definitely. Though we do feel a bit out of our element. Don't worry. Once we teach you a few crude gestures and get rid of the whole talking in the plural thing, you'll fit right in. After all this is over, we'll all head to Broadway and take in a show. Oh, bread and circuses! Are there gladiator fights? Actually, it's mostly a bunch of people dressed up as cats singing about wanting to break loose, and then a chandelier falls on them. How'd your brain stay alive all these years, anyway? Before our death, we left strict instructions with our viziers to pickle our brain in a special solution of crocodile tears and ground ibis beaks. And that kept your brain alive? Don't be ridiculous. It was our special gift that kept our brain alive. Duh. I've got to find a way past Cosmic Gorilla Guy and Doctor Strange Accent. Hmm. Early in our reign, we found out that a minor vizier and a captain of the guard were conspiring against us. We could have wiped them out with a thought, but it amused us to turn them against each other instead. Let's roll. Aha! We shall roll like a wheel, yes? You sure know your obscure cultural references, Your Majesty. Roll! Roll onward! The Commissioner frowns on wasting bullets on people that don't technically need to be shot. Welcome to the Museum of Mostly Natural History. Mr. Paperweight. Gee, thanks. That's the nicest thing you've said since you hired me. <clears throat> so, uh, what can I do for you, boss? Let us begin. Please make your way to the Melozoic Era exhibit in the center of the main floor. The dinosaur exhibit. You got it. Although it lasted for only seven weeks during the late summer of 56 million BC, the Melozoic Era produced an incredible explosion of evolutionary diversity, most of which was quickly erased by less ridiculous creatures. I did not know that. Thanks, boss. Anything else, boss? Gently yank the bone to hear the roar of the Poyosaurus Henway. Yank the bone. You got it. Well, looks like everything's working A-OK, -okay, boss. Anything else, boss? Please make your way to the animatron of the terrible beast assaulting the city. The beast attacking the city? Right away, boss. Humanity has long pondered about the eventual fate of the Earth. Today, thanks to sophisticated supercomputers, scientists have determined that the world will end in the year 2015, as giant monsters, environmental disasters, and political apathy combine to turn our world into an unlivable hellhole shortly before the sun unexpectedly goes nova. Yeah, yeah, boss. Very informative. Anything else, boss? Turn the hourglass to witness the Earth's final moments, as predicted by accredited apocalypticians. Turn over the hourglass. Check. Anything else, boss? Please proceed to the treasures of the Forgotten Pharaoh exhibit. The Egypt exhibit? Right away, boss. I guess Sal's out of range. I'll head back to base now, Mr. P. And finally, the pride of the museum. 
Please proceed to the Knights of York Sagoth display. Knights of York Sagoth exhibit? Right away, sir. The Order of Yog Sagoth were an ancient society of mystic knights dedicated to serving an overfiend of the Dark Dimensions. This priceless tapestry, woven from the meticulously groomed back hair of the knights, is all that remains of their order. That's really illuminating, boss. Anything else, boss? To see the terrifying power of the Yog Sagoth tapestry, pull the sword from the eyeball. Pull the sword? Will do, boss. Looks okay to me. Anything else, boss? Boss? Well, if you don't have anything else for me, I'll just head back to the base. That fellow reminds me of my great-granduncle Eustatius. Canis erectus. This freakish tooth, dating from the late Fumerian era, is thought to represent an evolutionary dead end of heavyset man-dog hybrids. Oh, Anubis will not be happy with this insult to his gut. It's a telltale trail of Grandpa Stinky's brain-preserving demon broth. Ooh, what a delightful aroma! This Grandpa Stinky must be a skilled sorcier. Poyosaurus Henway. The curious communication devices in this museum look fascinating. Hey, guard guy. Don't bother me, Tyrone. I've got to keep a lookout for Sam. Ooh, he's a smart one, isn't he? Who is this annoying creep? Are you Sam? We are the Pharaoh, you odiferous primate! And you would do well to kneel in our presence. How about I make you dance instead? tra -la -la. I'm rather enjoying this. Oh, this is too easy. The beast couldn't hit the side of a granary with a throw stick. Tra-la-la! -la. Can't you see we're busy? That's enough playtime for now. Ah. Oyosaurus Henry. Hey, Your Majesty, check out these spiffy phone numbers. Phone numbers? Ah, hieroglyphics to activate the translocation toy. We always wondered how that device worked. It probably would have helped if the ancient astronauts who taught you how to build pyramids had left behind a few telephones. Say, one of those phone numbers is brand new. Tapestry of Yog sagoth Overfiend of the Dank Dimensions. On loan from the East Village chapter of the Knights of Yog Sagoth. He doesn't look so tough. In fact, he looks kind of flammable. We had Yog Sagoth worshippers in our time. They kept trying to steal our toys. Behold, the dread wonder of Yog Sagoth, overfiend of the Dark Dimension. Creepy. It's a good thing our forefathers kept this guy from schlepping into our dimension, or we'd probably be seeing that on our currency by now. We like him. He reminds us of our father. Really? Of course not. Our father was a sandal merchant. That's a picture of some sort of unholy hell beast. Really, Sam, you're far too gullible. He's probably sleeping off a basalt binge. Neolithic mustache clippers?
although the Hindenburg met its fiery demise in 1937, its sister ship, the Aeroschwein, is still in operation today and was a stunt double in the 1968 musical, Let's All Go for a Ride in My Beautiful Balloon. That looks like one of the balloons my magicians would create with inflated sheep's bladders. You really know how to kill a conversation, Your Majesty. Coming soon, a brief history of bad ideas in transportation. How is it your people make such superb handguns, yet you believe such nonsense? Pish posh! The great cow holds up the sky, and over her back rain the primeval waters. What is this laser show? Actually, I kind of forget, but I'm pretty sure it's bitchin'. Fascinating. It's too bad they aren't green. I hear those are the friendly ones. It's still got that old brain smell. You know, we do have incredible psychic powers at our disposal. The seven-sided pyramid of Hippopa was the crowning glory of Kestim Hum the Tiny until it collapsed under its staggering weight and unorthodox design. Seven-sided pyramids? That! My pyramids had so many sides, they were practically cones! Ah, the Sphinx. Have you heard its famous riddle? It'll knock your sandals off. It's all about, well, there's a cucumber, and then... Oh, no, wait. Let me start over. Don't bother, Your Highness. Really. Hey, it's me. Give or take 4,000 years and a decent tailor. More like 4,000 sit-ups. Ancient Egyptian Brain Screw. In my day, we called it the Divine Brain Swirly. Hey. More like 4,000... Ooh, pointy and dangerous. Two of my favorite things. Why does this simple device fill me with such a feeling of unspeakable dread? I think that's just Max's body having a tingle of anticipation. It does that when it sees exotic weaponry. Ah. If you're going to putrefy and decompose, you might as well do it in style. You're telling me? That's the Buckingham Imperial model with the optional scorpion proofing. I can almost hear them groaning in pain. You're gonna love reality TV. Ah, oh, the arrow of power. But where is the disc of madness? Or the orb of unending bounciness? We uh, haven't found them yet. But here, take a gander at this. Ah, oh, the wondrous essence thief. How well I remember disguising myself as a palm front to observe the forbidden rituals at the Temple of Adolescence. You tyrannical scamp. Future vision. Hey Max, check this out. It turns out that Lady Godiva was a dude. Ooh, icky. Well, either I managed to return Max's brain to his body in the future, or you're destined to learn a killer Max impression. Let's move on. on the shores of Bar El Zarraf. And it'll come in handy in the unlikely event that we need a seven-sided die to defeat Skunk Ape.
What in the name of Gorgar? In my experience, it's rarely a good idea to poke a space gorilla in the eyes. That's what lackeys are for, Sam. Hey, Max, check this out. It turns... Ooh, icky. Well, either I managed to return Max's brain to his body in the future... Let's move on. Hey, ouch! My thorax! My beautiful thorax! Ouch? Who'd want to pummel a nice bug guy like Sal? I'm sure that will be useful. Rhinoplasty. Subhumanity. Why will you say that? Since we're in a museum, I assume it'll be some sort of obscure historical reference. This is Paperweight's office. What a dump! Someone's coming. Why have you left the planetarium? That intergalactic bully is driving me bananas! And his minions are a threat to my beautiful museum! Can't you do something? Get a grip on yourself, man! Can't you see our long struggle to gather the toys is almost over? You think I don't know that? I've been dreaming of this second chance for decades! Then stop whining and get back in there! Yes, sir, Dr. Norrington. Right away, Dr. Norrington. Norrington. His imperious attitude puts me in mind of a loot teacher we fed to my crocodiles for correcting my divine embouchure. You know, Max's patter is a lot less... Violent? Multisyllabic. Looks like Paperweight subscribes to Obazoth's nonsensical Grimoire Club. Looks like Paperweight... This office could use a little tidying up, and a good firm raising. Check it out, Your Majesty. An insanely detailed top-down drawing of the city. What a remarkable illusion of depth. Oh yeah, you didn't have perspective and vanishing points in your time, did you? Of course we did! Why, we had a whole chamber full of perspectives, and a headdress adorned with vanishing points, and, and... Shut up! Rhinoplasty. We are not amused. Four ancient diabolical summoning spells. One pretty good chili recipe. It's locked. What kind of paranoid freak keeps his door locked from the inside? 
I locked all my slaves inside my birthday pyramid after they finished building it. Paperweight's not a slave. Are you sure? This office could use a little tidying up. And a good firm raising. That transportation exhibit is bound to be fascinating. We enjoy reveling in the failures of lesser beings. Paperweight's quite the reader. A lowly scribe, then. Teleportation. transmogrified into a glittering futuristic metropolis why do we feel like we're about to vomit that'd be the East River try to breathe through your uh, mouth hey guard guy don't bother me Tyrone I've got to keep a lookout for Sam I'm curious does your head hurt when you attempt to form complete sentences ah. Of that gorilla shooting at royalty. Please make your way to the animatron of the terrible beast assaulting the city. Beast attacking the city. Let's see. Ah, there it is. Now, poke the eyes to see an ancient, brutal civilization spring to life. Poke its eyes? Really? Oh well, you're the boss. What in the name of Gorgar? Urgh. Uh, what should I do now, boss? Urgh. Hey! Ouch! My thorax! My beautiful thorax! The under realms of Embo! What is going on out here? Urgh. I kinda hated doing that to poor Sal. Yes, most unfortunate. Beetles are sacred in my culture. Actually, I think he's a cockroach. Really? Then let him rot. General Skunkape! What? I would very much appreciate it if your minions would refrain from manhandling my employees. And I would appreciate it if you stopped using specious words like manhandling. Oh, take it like a man, you big ape. I can't believe I have allied myself to a sniveling irritant like you. Irritant? Do you think I enjoy having my schemes yoked to an uncouth, half-naked space fascist who can't even capture a six-foot-tall dog in a suit? I assume you can do better, you half-witted conjurer? Watch me. <laughs> nice simmering. One more unfortunate misunderstanding should be enough to push Tom and Nicole here straight into supervillain divorce court. Yo, PWA! What? I'm busy! So, about Sal. Sal? He is recovering from an unprovoked assault by a vicious space monkey. Ah, oh, poor guy. He deserves a space monkey who'll treat him right. I sure hope Skunk Apes boys don't trash your museum. I bet the hairballs are piling up already. If those space simians monkey with my precious tapestry, they will feel my hot explosive wrath. Fine, just keep your hot wrath off my jar, will ya? It takes forever to cling. Why are you and that big dumb ape Skunk Ape working together? I have no earthly idea. Dr. Norrington keeps telling me that Skunkape is the key to finally gathering all the toys and completing the spell, but nothing is worth this abuse! Nothing! Yes, feel the hate grow within you. All this talking with my brain is making me tired. Let's talk later. <laughs> hey, Skunkape! Yes?
Why are you working with that creepy paperweight guy? Because I foolishly believed that I could tolerate a brief alliance with this insulting necromancer in order to gather the toys of power. I even consented to allow him to complete that stupid little spell he'd been working on. That spell thing Paperweight's working on? It wouldn't have something to do with summoning an elder god by the name of Yog sagoth would it? I wouldn't be surprised. Every other word out of that Cretan's mouth is Yog sagoth You'd think that tapestry was his security blanket the way he carries on about it. Oh boy. Don't touch the Yog sagoth tapestry. Yog sagoth is unstoppable. Words cannot describe the unspeakable terror of Yog Sagoth. I need some me time. Very well. Hey, minions! Yes? Don't talk to the squishy one, me Tiho. The general says his brain has the power to cloud apes minds. Flatterer. Looks like Max is stoking the fires of Discord. I'll see if I can add some fuel from out here. Hey, Sal. Are you okay? That space ape was pretty rough on you. No biggie. That's what chitinous exoskeletons are for, am I right? Oh, uh, right. Anyway, I'm not tangling with that guy again. Not even if the boss man tells me to. In my day, we'd have you flogged for such craven cowardice. Yeah, well, craven this, fuzzy britches. Ugh. What's with all the apes running around? I don't know, and I don't want to know. I'm not getting anywhere near those animals. I think you should apologize for threatening to incinerate my obviously alive buddy here. No offense, pal. I was just following orders. Ooh, we love it when servants say that. Your loyalty is commendable, Surf. See ya, Sal. Careful out there, Sam. This place is cooker tonight. Hey, guard guy. Don't bother me, Tyrone. I've got to keep a lookout for Sam. Right. I'll just let you get back to that. Rhinoplasty. Whee! Be careful, Your Highness. You're full of hydrogen and dangerously unstable. Oh, lighten up. I have. Whee! Could you move just a little bit to the left, Your Majesty? Why? No reason. Oh, the subhumanity. That was really quite exhilarating. You're welcome. Now never do it again. No problem. Whoops. Let 
go with me, commoner? Who is making all that inferno racket? Yaksagov! No! Never place your hands on our divine personage! Lighten up, your majesty. I think we're about to see some fireworks. Skunkape! What? One of your ignorant minions has destroyed the museum's priceless Yogg-Sagoth tapestry! Oh, really? Mahila! Yes, sir! Did any of you destroy Mr. Paperweight's precious tapestry? No, sir! I believe you owe me an apology, partner. You're right. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Or your minions are trigger-happy Neanderthals! That's it! I've had it up to here with your incessant, petulant whining! Petulant? Well, I've had it up to here with your imperious attitude and your odiferous banana breath! Banana breath? Banana breath? This alliance is over! So be it! It warms my heart to see these two fighting again. At least I think it does. Sam better come get me before these two losers knock over my jar, or worse, kiss and make up! Wait here, Your Majesty. This move's gonna require some sneakiness, and that body you're wearing isn't really known for its stealth. Very well. Resistance is pointless, Terran Flea! Eat my primordial wrath, monkey boy! It's about time. I would have been here two or three explosions ago if someone I know had the slightest bit of impulse control. Hey, my body's walking around without my brain. How'd you work that out? I found a loner in the creepy Egyptian exhibit. Nice kid, but a little bit of an attitude. Now let's get out of here before Goofus and Gallant figure out that we've played them for chumps. Come on, Your Highness. Your Majesty? The toy box! It's mine again! Box. Sam, you didn't stick the brain of a psychically gifted, unstable adolescent pharaoh in my cute little body, did you? Uh, maybe. That is so cool! Must resist. Norrington, help me! My hammer of Patar, the hairballs of Bastet, and the hangnails of Anubis, reality itself! We'll kneel before Samon Mac! Maybe we should be leaving. You think? And so ends another mind-boggling mystery solved by the loping wits and the capriciously applied violence of the freelance police. Who's up for a sugar grenade? What the hell are you talking about, Sam? I'm still a brain in a jar! Don't be silly, Max. You've always been a brain in a jar. No, I haven't! I'm a short, sexy lagomorph with an enormous mouth and dead, shark-like eyes! Hold that thought, little buddy. We've got some idolizing to do. Say what? Samun Mac is handsome! Samun Mac is cute! When, when we, we think, think of Salmon Mac, Mac, we give a big salute. salute! Oh, you have got to be kidding! Attention, everyone! From this point forward, those little things at the ends of your shoelaces. Aglets? Yes! Aglets are hereby decreed to be the most horrible things in all the world! It's a good thing I don't wear shoes. Sam, snap out of it! Snap out of what? Ah! Just get me out of here! I gotta find my body! Hey, Sam! What is it, Max? I'm a little fuzzy about how our last case wrapped up. Well, after Skunk Ape kidnapped you, I went on an embarrassing, noirish rampage through the streets, eventually tracking you down to the museum, where I, uh, uh, hail Sam and Mac! Ouch! Looks like Sam and Mac's rewrite of history has more gaps than a British subway system. How long has Sam and Mac been in charge of everything? Oh, Sam and Mac's always been in charge. Ever since he emerged from the newly created sun, resplendent in his billowing robe of glorious wonderment, and banished the evil cat demons to the underworld. 
cat demons? Yes, they ruled the Earth in the before time. If Sam and Mac's so great, why is the city still such a mess? You know, Sam and Mac doesn't stress cleanliness. He's more of a tithing and sacrifice kind of deity. So as far as you know, I've been a disembodied brain during the entire time you've known me, right? Um, yeah. How could I possibly be an effective force for violently ironic justice without fists, teeth, or a gun? Don't sell yourself short, Max. Your poisonous personality and sharp-edged container has gotten us out of more jams than I care to remember. Like? Well, there's... Hail Salmon Mac! Yeesh! If Salmon Mac's in charge of everything, who's President of the United States? Don't be ridiculous, Max. You are. Phew! Of course, it's largely a ceremonial position. All you really do is go to a lot of mall openings. Ah! Any luck getting me a body? Why do you want a body anyway? You've never wanted one before. Forget it! Let's get a move on. Will do. Hey, Sam! From this angle, you can see my great big honking... Zip it, little buddy. Impressively grandiose monument to Sam and Mac the Great, erected by his gratefully besotted subjects, October 10th, 1791. Oh, now I know that's wrong, Sam. Bosco's was standing here right up until this morning. Bosco never existed, little buddy. Neither did Mama Bosco. What's that? Wow, that last case must have pranked your frontal cortex more than usual, Max. That's one of Sam and Mac's fabulous animatronic auto idols. The Boy King uses them to receive praise, address the masses, and keep an eye out for nasty heretics. Why does it look like me? Don't be blasphemous, little pal. It looks like Salmon Mac. Ooh, we're about to be addressed. Salmon Mac is mighty. Salmon Mac is grand. The brilliance the of brilliance of Salmon, 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 Salmon Mac is more than, is we, more than we can stand. Hello, everyone. It's me, Salmon Mac, Pharaoh of Pharaohs, ruler of reality here. I just wanted to say that I hereby decree that aglets are now the most wonderful thing in the whole world! Carry on! Darn, no aglets! If I had some, I would have given them to him. An idol on every corner! Now why didn't I think of that while I was planning my cult? Hey Sam! From this angle, you can see my great big honking- Zip it, little buddy. Sam! What is it, Max? I'm feeling a little lost right now. Isn't that my line? Usually, but now that you're a member of Team Sam and Mac, it looks like I'll be doing all the driving. You're a funny little glob of protein, Max. Give me a clue! I can hardly wait to bask in Lord Sam and Mac's presence. I hope I don't drool too much. Give me a clue! Hmm... I can hardly wait to bask in Lord Sam and Mac's presence. I hope I don't drool too much. Let's get a move on. Will do. Smack Backs Yak Slacks. It's a story about how Sam and Mac briefly declared Andy and Weave Pants to be his most favored thing in the whole wide world for a few hours last Thursday, before he discovered how itchy they were and had them all destroyed in a massive bonfire. Fickle little tyrant, ain't he? Oh, I suppose in Sam and Mac world, the fire hydrants flow with fizzy grape soda. Don't be silly, old chum. They flow with plain old ambrosia, same as the faucets. What the heck is going on with our office? Oh, we got kicked out of it last week when Sam and Mac requisitioned it to make way for a new statue commemorating his new high score on Mimesweeper. Where do we work now? Mostly out of the DeSoto. You know, I hadn't really thought about it until we were kicked out, but we haven't really used our office in months. If Sam and Mac is such a perfect ruler, and this is such a perfect world, then why are there still parking meters? Quit it, Max. Cognitive dissonance gives me gas, like my Uncle Barney's Great Dane. Max, beware. Who said that? Who said what? Hold on, Sam. I think I'm getting a call from a new psychic friend. Well played, Max. Sam must suspect nothing. Only you can untangle the twisted reality woven by Sam and Mac. Me? Oh, there's a great plan. What am I gonna do, leak all over him? Make contact with the rebels. They will give you the tools you need. Um, I don't see any rebels. You will know them by their backhanded salute. Now, I must leave before I am discovered. Good luck, Max. We're all counting on you. Who 
are you, anyway? You may call me Dr. Norrington. So, what now, little buddy? What about, oh, I don't know, getting my body back? I keep telling you, Max, you've never had a body. All right, fine. Let's go find someone with a backhanded salute. What for? For the thrill of it. Hail Salmon Mac. Hail Salmon Mac. Where would you like to go today, Sam? Perhaps you'd like to give a gift to Lord Salmon Mac. Or maybe make a visit to Salmon Mac's planetarium throne room to bask in his glory. Or maybe you'd just like to cruise around the city taking in the wonders that Lord Salmon Mac has bestowed on us. Those all sound swell, guys, but I think I'll let Max pick the destination today. He's in a bit of a funk. You know who could fix that? Sam on Mac. I don't have any psychic toys! I really gotta find those rebels. Senseless vandalism has its place, but this isn't it. Mista card, the last more or less honest credit card. Normally I'd be leery of a pizza franchise expanding into the credit market, but if their loan rates are as stingy as their toppings, then sign me up! Stinkies, maker of Lord Salmon Mac's favorite corn dogs. Of course they're his favorites, he's licking them with my taste buds! Stinkies is packed with crates of corn dogs for Sam and Max's endless feast. Stinky, what do you want, you shiftless tab-running losers? Can't you see I'm doing the Lord's work here? This will only take a minute. That's what you always say before you drag me into your little schemes. I see you brought out your catering truck for another delivery to our magnificent potentate. Aye, Lord Salmon Mac can't get enough of my special corn dogs with their secret blend of herbs, spices, and insect viscera. I want one now! Gimme, gimme, gimme! Down you! These corn dogs are going straight to the old king's never-ending buffet table at the planetarium. Besides, Max, you don't even have a mouth or a digestive system. What would you want with a corn dog? So, you'll be heading off to the planetarium soon to bathe in the glow of Sam and Max's praise? Aye, if I can ever get my lazy, good-for-nothing granddaughter to quit messing with her cell phone! Oh, uh, I'm just, um, clearing up a few details with Sam and Max's high vizier, Grandpa. Sure you are. You see what I have to put up with? That's why we never work with family members. Especially after that time with Cousin Lucretia. No. How are you and Girl Stinky getting along? Why don't you go ask her yourself? It's not as though she's doing anything else right now. She just spends all her time texting people, never lifting a finger to help our poor old grandpa. Feh. It's nice to see your familial bonds are as strong as ever in this cruddy new world. What in the name of Sobek Scrotum is he on about? Beats me. I think he's just having one of his episodes. Who's Girl Stinky texting anyway? She says she's organizing the buffet over at the planetarium, but I think she's just chatting up her new boyfriend. A boyfriend? Stinky? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I needed that. Oh, if I had a nose, I would have horked milk out of it. <laughs> but seriously, Grandpa, Salmon Max sure is swell, isn't he? Oh, that he is, lad. Why, just last night, there was this tremendous storm over the city, causing my knees to seize up something fierce. Ah, I used to have an elbow like that. Back when I had elbows. Shush you. So I brought a gift to the local Salmon Mac offering depository, dropped it off with a little prayer, and hoot, the skies cleared up the next morning and my knees are fine. Praise Salmon Mac. Oh, yeah, because storms never end on their own. It must have been Sam and Mac that did it. Max, are you blaspheming the name of Sam and Mac, you squashy little nobody? No way, Grandpa Stinky. Max is cool, aren't you? Hail, Sam and Mac. 
That's bitter. So Sam and Mac really changed the weather for you? That's incredible. Some might say unbelievable. Aye, and it's a good thing too. When those low pressure systems roll in, my knees seize up like burnt tapioca. Hey, you've got an unholy knack with meats and organs. Any chance you can whip up a body for Max? Well, I have been noodling with a recipe for a golem made of hummus. Ugh, no! Never mind. Suit yourself. You look different today, Stinky. Do you think? It's the glazed-over mask of idolatry, Sam. No, no, it's that. Ooh, snazzy. Did you get that at the Ren Fair? Ren Fair? This is the medallion of tithing, given to me by Lord Salmon Mac for offering him a one-of-a-kind gift that was most pleasing to his omniscient eye. What'd you give him? Some yak hair pants. They were the only ones in the world. I'm jealous. You should be. If I can scrape up a couple more of these accessories of privilege, I'll be sitting at the right hand of Lord Salmon Mac himself. All you had to do to get that accessory of privilege was give Lord Salmon Mac a present? Aye, but only a one-of-a-kind gift. That's his most precious thing in the whole wide world. Well, that's tricky. The Pharaoh's a bit, uh, whimsical. Tell me about it. I never can tell what sort of exotic toppings he's gonna want on these infernal corn dogs. Salmon Mac is handsome. Salmon Mac is cute. When, when we, we think, think of, of Salmon, Salmon Mac, Mac, we, we give, give a, big, a salute. big salute. Uh, just a normal salute. Salmon Mac is mighty. Salmon Mac is grand. The, the brilliance, brilliance of Lord, Lord Salmon, Salmon Mac, Mac is, is more than, than we can stand. stand. Oh, brother. Well, you look busy. Notice that, did you? So we'll be on our way. What? No riddles? No discursive queries into the secret ingredients of my mysterious menu items? We're between cases. Oh, that body-snatching pharaoh even bamboozled the stinkies? What good is bitter narcissism if it can't protect you from mind control? Hey, stinky. How's it shaking? Oh joy, it's Chico and the man. Can we just cut to the chase? I've got important Simon Mac business to attend to. What are you doing out here? What does it look like? I'm helping Grandpa Stinky load another metric barge load of corn dogs to Lord Salmon Max. Never-ending buffet table over at the planetarium. That's funny. It looks like you're texting your boyfriend. Boyfriend? Who said I had a boyfriend? I'm saving myself for Lord Salmon Mac. Isn't he like, uh, ten? Now, but in a few years. So, who are you texting? I'm, uh, handling all the logistics of the buffet. Seems kind of cruel to let your grandpa do all the heavy lifting. Oh, uh, he insisted. No, I didn't. Grandpa Stinky's looking relatively upbeat today. Insufferable, isn't it? Ever since he got that medallion of tithing, he's been running around like his broccoli doesn't smell. Lord Salmon Max sure is swell, isn't he? Oh, I know, and so powerful. Oh, and wealthy, and powerful. You said powerful twice. What can I say? I like power. Salmon Mac is handsome. Salmon Mac is cute. When we think of Salmon Mac, we give a big salute. That wasn't backhanded. Salmon Mac is mighty. Salmon Mac is grand. The brilliance of Lord Salmon Mac is more than we can stand. Oh, come on, guys! Grow some basil ganglia! You look, uh, busy, so we'll let you get back to your, uh, work. It's been great, guys. Let's do this again real soon. Stinkies, catering to Lord Salmon Mac since 1923. Since when does Stinkies cater? It's right there on the truck, Max. Our Lord Salmon Max sure loves his corn dogs. Hail Salmon Mac! Hail Salmon Mac! Hail Salmon Mac! Yeah, yeah, hail Salmon Mac!
Plotting revolution can't be easy with all the creepy statues around. Why would anyone want to plot revolution? No reason. How come your lord Salmon Mac hasn't fixed the city's broken down payphones? He's phasing in brand new communications technology. A vast network of vacuum tubes? Nope. Messenger slaves crawling through a vast network of vacuum tubes. Hey Sam! What is it, Max? Let's get a move on. Will do. Salmon Mac shatters storm. Citizens rejoiced as Lord Salmon Mac used his mighty powers to disperse a thunderstorm in advance to his annual visit to our fair city. And look, there's a picture. Hey! Stop bothering me. I finally found my place in Sam and Mac's blessed world and I don't need my bubble rub by no freelance police. Hey, monkey boy! Monkeys have tails, dog man, and I'm busy. Nothing says beloved ruler like a ubiquitous surveillance network. Nothing says... It's about time they built an official Sam and Mac offering vault out here in the borough. Offering vault? You mean there's nothing in there but stuff that people have given to Sam and Mac? Yep. No more schlepping over to Newark for this Sam and Mac tithing doggy. Hey, Sal! Sam! I see you got a new job. Grand Vizier Paperweight was so impressed with my work as a museum security guard that he promoted me to the chief offering collector here at the Regional Offering Vault 714. It's true, you cockroaches really are survivors. Yep, and now I don't even have to patrol. All I gotta do is guard this door and take gifts into this impenetrable offering vault. It's a little slice of heaven. How go the offerings today? Ah, eh, you know how it is. In a tough economy, charitable contributions go right down the toilet. Even gifts to Lord Salmon Mac? I know. The guy creates the sky and the stars and the creatures of the field, and people let a little thing like a double-dip recession stop them from paying their respects. It's a sick, sad world, Sal. I've got a gift for Lord Salmon Mac. Oh, yeah? I can't accept just any old thing, you know. The omnipotent one is kind of picky. What you got? How about this nifty brain in a jar? Ooh, that's a really bad idea, Sam. Why? I'd make a perfect gift! Most people, sure, but Lord Salmon Mac has a thing about disembodied brains. Some sort of unresolved past life issues. Oh yeah, I remember reading about that in his autobiography. Well, looks like you'll have to stay out here with me, little buddy. You know, if Max here wasn't a brain, he'd probably make a fine offering. Sam and Mac loves it when people offer up their friends as gifts. How about a handsome but seldom useful firearm? Lord Sam and Mac doesn't need guns. He could drop an army by wrinkling his cute little nose. I didn't know my cute little nose could wrinkle. Uh, on second thought, I don't think I have anything worthy of his plenipotency at the moment. I hear ya. I got worthiness issues myself. I just love your Sam and Mac accessory. Pretty sweet, huh? That's my ornament of fealty. Lord Sam and Mac gave it to me for exposing an evil heretic. A heretic? What, did he deny the quadrine nature of the esoteric illuminations? Worse. He didn't salute fast enough. That is bad. So, to get my own ornament of fealty, I need to expose a heretic? Heretics aren't so easy to find these days. Everyone knows you gotta bow down to Salmon Mac if you want to stay out of the pit of contrition. Hey Sal, does his absolute perfectionist have any empty bodies in there? My buddy's in the market for one. I'm sure he wouldn't miss it. First of all, the answer is no. Lord Salmon Mac doesn't have any empty bodies in there. Rats. Second of all, you really shouldn't kid around about stealing from the big guy. That kind of talk could get the Grand Vizier and his goons all over your keisters. If I had a butt, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Salmon Mac is handsome. Salmon Mac is cute. When we think of Salmon Mac, we give a big salute. That wasn't backhanded. Salmon Mac is mighty. Salmon Mac is grand. 
The brilliance of Lord Samunmak is more than we can stand. Uh, get a room, will ya? Catch you later, Sal. Hail Salmon Mac. Hail Salmon Mac right back at you, Sam. Oh, brother. Back away from the vault door, Sam. Come on, Sal. Can I have a little peek inside? Like all good Salmon Mac enthusiasts, I'm just dying to know what sort of cool stuff people are tithing this season. Sorry, Sam. No can do. The only people allowed in there are me and the Big Mac himself. I only go in there when I'm putting a new gift in the vault. Come on, Sam, stop messing with me. I hope the underground has a sweet hideout. The underground? The underground... Uh, the underground... Frisbee Golf League! Yeah. If I'm gonna be franchised out, I should at least be collecting licensing fees. It costs four lots of green to use this payphone. I remember when it was just a half bladder of lamp oil. Come when on! When your toaster's gone kapert, bring it down to Radio Yurt. Nicky may charge an arm and a leg, but at least his poetry sucks. Welcome back to Arena Nicky T's Radio Yurt. I love Nicky's ads. He dresses up like Genghis Khan and slashes high prices with a giant sword until the prices are all lying on the ground with their guts all hanging out. <sighs> oh, sorry, just kind of got lost in the moment there. Ooh, that's brutal. Get me out of here, Sam! Holy mother of Salmon Mac dancing the karaoke with the priests of Bast. What was that? I think they were dial-up modems. Hold me! Radios. Do they still make those? Keep it down, will ya? We're trying to listen to the fights. Right in La Bonza. Frankie. Ah, jeez, as if I don't have enough trouble today. Now I gotta deal with the freaking freelance police. Beat it, coppers. Yeah, let us fleece our cousin in peace. Do my not ears deceive me, or are those rats mouthing off to us? I believe they are, Max. Shall we make a lesson of them? I believe we shall. Now be nice while we talk to your cousin. What sort of low-rent criminal shenanigans are you and your Ken perpetrating out here? And please keep in mind that I can see the future, so I'll know if we'll be slapping you around for lying to us later on. Hey, there's nothing illegal going on here, honest. Me and my cousins were just engaging in a little friendly wagering over Samu Max, uh, what you call it, gladiatorial bouts. Really? Yeah. Uh, of course we don't actually bet on who wins or loses. That Skunkape gorilla's impossible to beat. Uh, so we bet on what the general's finishing move's gonna be. Finishing move? <laughs> How 90s? When General Skunkape finishes off an opponent, he'll use one of his six signature moves to do the deed. Before each fight, we make bets on which one it's gonna be. Fascinating. No, it's not. Humor the little rat guy, Max. Could you run through this whole gladiatorial gambling thing again? You probably couldn't tell, but I was asleep the last time. Sure, sure, no problemo. Like I said, me and the boys like to bet on which of the six signature finishing moves General Skunkape uses to annihilate his opponent in Samu Mac's Pit of Contrition. Hey, you're a rat who knows how to get things. Plague, diphtheria, scabies. Do you have a line on any empty body so that we could drop Max's brain into? I'm getting a little existential in here. I'd like to help, guys, but uh, that's a little out of my pay grade. I can fix you up with a nice cost stereo, though. Thanks, we'll pass. Let's not be too hasty, Sam. The powers of my psychic brain melded to a kicking sound system could be a formidable force for justice. That Sam and Max sure is the bee's knees, isn't he? You know it, pal. Take a look at this cool bit of bling. If I get a couple more of these accessories of privilege, I'll be hobnobbing with the big S himself. 
That's some sweet Salmon Mac themed bling you got there. Bling? <laughs> Do people still say that? And not just any bling. This here's a genuine pendant of Inquisition, given to me by Lord Samu Mac after I personally checked the 160,000 orifices of 20,000 guests at the security checkpoint of His Majesty's Summer Soiree. Classy. Tell me we're not going to do that. Can I uh, borrow your thingy of Inquisition? No! How about throwing it in the pot to spice things up a little? Nah, uh, I'll stick with cash. Salmon Mac is handsome. Salmon Mac is cute. When we think of Salmon Mac, we give a big salute. That wasn't backhanded. Salmon Mac is mighty. Salmon Mac is grand. Come on, guys, grow some basal ganglia. Mind if I lay down a bed? You, a freelance cop, gambling on the street like a common rat? Hey, guys, wake up! What? What? The high and mighty freelance policeman wants to make a bet on the next fight. Bring him on! More money for us! So, which move do you think Skunkape will use next? 20 simoleons on the Gorilla Girly Slam. Sam, since when do you have any cash? And, uh, <clears throat> where are you carrying it? A, since Sam and Mac kicked us out of our office, we've been saving a bundle by living out of the DeSoto, and B, none of your damn business. Touche. All right, cousins of mine, Sam has made his bet. What are your picks? I'll take the Space Ape Kidney Punch. I'll put down 20 on the Great Ape Leg Sweep. And I'll pick the, uh, Gorilla Thigh Squeeze. But first, I better go get some cash. What's that all about? Frankie doesn't trust us, so he never carries any cash when he's around us. Subsequently, he always has to run off to the ATM machine every time he makes a bet. Hey, Paulie, you just called it an ATM machine. So what? So that's redundant, that's what. I'm back! Ah, oh, it's a good thing, too. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern here were starting to put me into a coma. Shh, the fight's about to start. Looks like another blasphemous mole man has entered the ring to face off against Salmon Max undefeated champion Skunkape. Let's see how he does. Skunkape circles the ring. The challenger runs for his life. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Skunkape's moving in for the kill. Which one of his signature moves will he use? Is it... Oh my yes! It's the Great Eight Leg Sweep! And the crowd goes wild! No thigh squeeze? Aww. Oh, come on, Skunkape. Use your stinking hands. Ooh, more money for my Manny Petty. Come on! I'm picking up a faint whiff of disestablishmentarianism. I think that's Stinky's famous kelp nuggets. Well, that was an interesting shortcut. Look, these grotty little mole people have made a primitive mosaic of Lord Salmon Mac. That's me, Sam! I think it's cute that you maintain such a positive self-image, Max. I'm not sure if Salmon Mac would approve of this mosaic. Where's the beard thingy and the headdress? Someday we should get around to properly burying Samoth and Maximus. Hey, mole cultists. How's it going? Uh, okay. Please don't snarl at us again. Why would I do that? I've got Max's brain back, and everything's right with the world. Right. What are you guys up to on this fine Salmon Mac created day? Something mole manny, I bet? Oh, nothing, really. We were guarding something, but it's gone now, and we couldn't be happier. <laughs> oh yeah, I vaguely remember something about that. What was that again? Nothing important. Certainly not a toy box of unspeakable reality-altering power or anything. Okay. Want any help with that missing artifact that I can't quite remember? Nah, we're good. Don't give it a second thought. <laughs> Lord Salmon Max sure is nifty, isn't he? Yes, wonderful guy. 
He's a peach, all right. <laughs> I can't imagine why anyone would ever rebel against him. No, sir. <laughs> Ow! I don't know why I'm asking you gals, but do you know anything about making bodies for disembodied brains? Max here is getting really antsy without one. The brain without a head! Deliverance is at hand! Hey, a simple no would be sufficient. Salmon Mac is mighty. Salmon Mac is grand. The, the brilliance, brilliance of Lord, Lord Salmon, Salmon Mac is Mac more, than, is we more than we can stand. Salmon Mac is handsome. Salmon Mac is cute. When, when we, we think, think of Salmon, Salmon Mac, Mac, we, we give, give a, a big, big salute. salute. Hey, you gave a backhanded salute. Are you a rebel? Rebels? Where? Salmon Mac is mighty. Salmon Mac is grand. The brilliance of Lord Salmon Mac is more than we can stand. That should keep him busy for the next few hours. So are you a rebel or not? We're much more than mere rebels. Hey, aren't you... To defeat Salmon Mac, you will need a weapon that our rebel forefathers originally used to separate his tyrannical brain from his spoiled body back in ancient Egypt. Cable television? No. We speak of the Brain Screw. Ooh, pointy and dangerous. Two of my favorite things. Bring the sacred weapon close to Salmon Mac, and we'll take care of the rest. Bring the Brain Screw to Salmon Mac. Easy peasy. I fear it will be neither easy nor peasy. But fear not. I wasn't. We have obtained several tools to help you in your quest. My psychic toys! I've missed you, boys. Many more people sacrifice your dignity and 401ks to steal these infernal amusements out from under Salmon Mac's all-seeing gaze. Use them wisely. Wisely. That's adorable. <laughs> hey, Sam! Giddy up! Reverend Submission is tough on the knees. That's nice. Hey, I got us a case! Really? Yeah! The case of Sam and Max missing brain screw. Ooh, sounds pointy and dangerous. It better be, or you better get used to carrying me around. Uh, I've been carrying you for years. Well, if Sam and Max missing his brain screw, we'd better bring it back to him. He's probably in the throne room at the museum. How long is he going to be out like that? We'll keep him under until reality reasserts itself. I wish I had hands so I could draw a monocle on his face. Hey, my brain water's pretty warm, Sam. Try sticking his hand in my jar. How long is he going to be out like that? We'll keep him under until reality reasserts itself. You know, it's eerie how much Maximus looks like Lord Sam and Mac. Someday we should get around to properly burying Samoth and Maximus. Oh, we'll take care of that. It's the least we can do for the ancestors of our future saviors. Do you have any idea what they're talking about? Only marginally. Sam, how about a little worshipful kneeling, huh? I know you love it, and I want to uh, talk to these mole guys for a bit about how cool Sam and Mac is. Great idea, pal. Who are you guys, anyway? We are the last disciples of the anti Sam and Mac Society and Croquet League of West Nigeria. The A.S. Yes, yes. It's an unfortunate acronym. Believe me, it spelled something a lot more awe-inspiring back in ancient Egypt. So when this is all over, I get my body back, right? Your clothes may not survive the reality-altering process. And your list of favorite songs and television programs will remain the same, but sorted into alphabetical order. Damn, Sam and Mac. Still, it's a small price to pay. I'm a little unclear on this. Did Sam and Mac change the world and make everyone but us think it had always been this way? Or did he actually change it so it's always been this way, and we're the only ones who know that it hasn't? The first one. The second one. Wow, well, that's reassuring. Actually, we don't really know. But really, what's the difference? Whatever the nature of this perverted reality, Sam and Mac must be stopped. Is this not correct? Yes! No! What? 
What was the question again? That's the spirit. Hang on, I've seen movies. If the world's always been this way, how come everything's mostly the same? How come it's not raining chickpeas or flying dinosaurs rule the cities, instead of everything being so normal? We don't know why everything's so normal, talking rabbit brain in a jar. Ask your friend the talking dog, or the man-sized cockroach, or the alien space gorilla. Just get on with it, or we'll be stuck in this shoddily remade reality forever! Why'd you knock out Obadiah there? He's had a hard time holding on to his identity in this new Thamunmak-centric reality. He might have salamandered you out to the Grand Vizier. I think you mean ratted. Spoken like someone who's never loaned money to a salamander. Who's this Norrington guy? And why is he talking in my head? We have no idea. Shortly after Sam and Mac reordered reality, Norrington made contact with us and began aiding our desperate arrangements to defeat the Pharaoh. As long as he is an enemy of Samun Mak, he is a friend of ours. Whoever he is, we trust him implicitly. Can you guys cast any cool curses? The old ways are long lost to us city moles. But I can whip you up a tantalizing fresh pear and almond dessert pizza. Hey, about that brain screw. You mustn't alert your partner to our plans. Can't we just give it to you? No, we could never get close enough to the Pharaoh to use it. He doesn't trust small people. Just because your people ripped out his brain a few thousand years ago? <laughs> Way to hold a grudge. You must bring the brain screw to Sam and Mac's side. Are you sure we can't just give you this brain screw? All of Sam's kissing up to Sam and Mac is making me ill. Courage, brave little squishy one. Just get close to Sam and Mac, then we'll take care of the rest. You stay here cowering in the dark. I'll go beat the bad guy. Good luck, moist savior. We'll be fighting by your side, in spirit, from down here. No, don't think so. Sick Semper Tyrannus, Junior! Yeah, we! That brain screw's a menace! And it makes people speak in gobbledygook! I think that's Latin, Max. Girl Stinky's got an unlimited texting plan. <laughs> Texting's so 2009. All the cool kids are blimp dingling these days. You're cute when you make up tech fads, Max. No! I love Lord Salmon Mock! It looks like Grandpa Stinky's got a date with Lord Salmon Mac's heretic police in the near future. It's always the guy you most suspect, isn't it? Let me help you out with that, little buddy. Don't mind if you do! the 28.5% annual interest rate talking, but I'm feeling a mite peckish right now. A mite peckish? Have you been watching British TV again? I can't! 
can't help it. The short seasons appeal to my limited attention span. Hey, Sal. Sam. I've got a gift for Lord Sam and Mac. We'll see about that. What you got? How about an authentic Egyptian brain screw? Ooh, that's a really bad idea, Sam. Why? Didn't you hear? Sam and Mac hates those things. I should destroy it right now. We'd better hold on to it just in case Lord Sam and Mac changes his mind. Yeah, okay. He is a whimsical overlord. How about a credit card? I'm offering 0% APR on balance transfers. Lord Sam and Mac doesn't need credit. He prefers to just manifest his will. So, no. Darn. Uh, on second thought, I don't think I have anything worthy of his plenipotency at the moment. I hear ya. I got worthiness issues myself. Catch you later, Sal. Hail Salmon Mac. Hail Salmon Mac right back at you, Sam. Oh, brother. No, Sam! The brain screw belongs to Lord Salmon Mac! If a commoner touches it, you'll get icky mortal cooties all over it! Good thinking, little buddy. That won't work. No, Sam! The Good thinking, little buddy. I'd better go to the museum to give Lord Salmon Mac his brain screw. I bet I'll get a cool reward. Oh, Lord Salmon Mac's gonna love this. Hmm, looks like someone's about to give Lord Salmon Mac the perfect gift. And I hope it's me. No, you can't have my toy. I need to give this to the General. Hey! Wow, what do you call deja vu in the future? Deja vu? Signature moves will he use? Is it? Oh man, that was even more useless than usual. Gotta love the way the general uses his hands. Too bad I didn't get the rest right. I should have known better than to go back to the gorilla moves. Ah, I thought for sure it would be the kidney punch. Right into a bonza. The Pharaoh sure loves a good light show. Franklin? Again? Don't tell him nothing, Frankie. Yeah! I'd like to make another bet. Hey, it's your loss, Squeaky. I'll put a Jackson on the Simeon Sucker Punch. All right, cousins of mine, Sam has made his bet. What are your picks? I'm liking that Gorilla Girly Slap. I see a Gorilla Girly Slap in the near future. And I'll pick the, uh, Space Ape Kidney Punch. But first, I better go get some cash. We take jewelry! So, rats, huh? Well, how's that working out for you? The fight's about to start! Looks like another blasphemous mole man has entered the ring to face off against Salmon Max undefeated champion, Skunkape. Let's see how he does. Ow! Boom goes the dynamite! Skunkape's moving in for the kill. Which one of his signature moves will he use? Is it, yes, the crowd-pleasing Simeon Sucker Punch? And the crowd goes wild! Ah, I thought for sure it would be the kidney punch. Gotta love the way the general uses his hands. Too bad I didn't get the rest right. I should have known better than to go back to the gorilla moves. Hey, I won. 
Lucky dog. Yes, that's it. Luck. In no way aided by a brain with powers to see into the future. Don't push it, Max. They may be smarter than they look. Come on! Whee! <laughs> Okay, let's have a nice, firm chat with this body-stealing croc muncher. That's no way to talk about our divine leader, Max. Ah, oh, good grief. Kick him in the scarabs! Do it! Do it! Ooh! <laughs> well played, General Skunkape. You are truly our fiercest and smelliest warrior. I live for your praise, my liege. You know, I enjoy a good pummeling as much as the next brain in a jar, but that seemed really unfair. It may seem unfair, little buddy, but it's the only way those stinking rebels will learn to accept Sam and Max's righteous rule. You're creepy when you're sycophantic, Sam. Christ, that rat's bank account must have more zeros than Donald Trump's alimony checks! I almost feel sorry for the little dude. Oh well, Sam and Mac knows best. Looks like Skunk Ape's working out a lot of unresolved issues on those mole men. It's cheaper than therapy, and almost as funny! It's Lord Sam and Mac's astral projector. I think it keeps the sky from falling. What is it, Max? Give me a clue! Hmm... I can hardly wait to bask in Lord Sam and Max's presence. I hope I don't drool too much. Let's get a move on. Will do. Inner Circle members only. I don't think we're supposed to go in there. That doesn't apply to us. We're the Freelance Police! Stop! Only members of Lord Samon Mak's inner circle are allowed within ten cubits of the boy king. Aww. And how does sniveling jerk like you get to be in the inner circle? The same way as everyone else, by earning accessories of privilege. I like the face. How can I get these accessories? Just do exceptionally good deeds on Samon Mak's behalf, like I did. Now scat. Well, that wasn't very nice. But it won't stop me from returning Lord Sam and Max's brain screw. I just need to rustle up some accessory thingies. Paperweight. That's Grand Vizier paperweight to you, peasant. Grand Vizier? Don't you remember, Max? After our ancestors stopped Paperweight from summoning Yogg Sagoth to overthrow Sam and Mac, Paperweight saw the error of his ways and worked his way up to becoming Sam and Max's Grand Vizier. Confidentially, I think Paperweight's pulling a scam. Uh, what can you do? Um, I don't think that's how it happened. You're just confused. Do you need something? I'm very busy organizing His Magnificentness's gladiatorial battles. What's Skunk Ape doing down there? In his infinite wisdom, His Awesomeness has decreed that General Skunkape will lead Samon Max legions in a conquest of the solar system and the stars beyond. Cool. Yeah, cool. But why is he wailing on mole men? As you know, Lord Samon Mak despises the mole people. Watching a space gorilla wail on them amuses him. <laughs> well, it is pretty funny. When does Skunk Ape's glorious conquest of the stars for Sam and Mac begin? I'm not entirely certain. I presume once his majesty tires of seeing mole men getting the stuffing beat out of them. I still can't believe you weaseled your way into a position of honor in Sam and Mac's court. Yellows? Heck no! Heck yes! How'd you do it? All it took was decades of service to the Lord Samon Mark. The things I had to do to earn my accessories of privilege would make you weep. Weep, I tell you! Big deal! Sam weeps at greeting card commercials! They turn an average day into something special. One of these days, I'm taking you down, paperweight. Dream on, foolish peasant! Without at least three accessories of privilege, you'll never even get near me! What an odd thing to say. How's the Great High Salmon Mac today? Wonderful as usual? If anything, he's even more wonderful. 
gosh. Blech. Any chance you could talk to his spectacularness about my little buddy? He seems to be missing a body. It's right there! Don't be silly, Max. That's Salmon Mac. Ah. Your friend seems upset with the Faro of Faros. He's not one of those heretical rebels, is he? Max? No way. He loves Salmon Mac, right? Well, he is really handsome and marketable. See? Hmm. So, any chance the big guy can help Max? I'm afraid his perfectness is booked up on boons for the next 37 years. There's no way to grant an audience sooner than that. <laughs> Unless, of course, you could somehow acquire enough accessories of privilege to join his inner circle. Yay! Salmon Mac is handsome. Salmon Mac is cute. When we think of Salmon Mac, we give the big salute. Salmon Mac is mighty. Salmon Mac is grand. The brilliance of Lord Salmon Mac is more than we can stand. Don't go anywhere, P. Wade. I've got my eye on you. Why would I leave? I'm right where I want to be, basking in Salmon Mac's glory. I can't get in there until I've obtained three accessories of privilege. I have something very important for the Pharaoh. Can you let me through? Hmm, let me consider this. My answer is no! Yoo-hoo, Lord Salmon Mac. He's blowing you off, Sam! And after all you did to put him on the throne! What are you talking about, Max? Never mind. Hmm... In New Zealand, this arrangement of nondescript stars has been designated the Big Fan. Ooh! Paperweight! What is that? It's an electric fan, my lord. Uh... Fan? Attention, everyone! This is Salmon Mac, the light of your lives and the breath in your lungs speaking. We just want you to know that, as of right now, electric fans are officially my most cherished things in the world, second only to our glorious selves. Carry on. Hmm, if I had one of those, I could give it to Salmon Mac. In days of yore, British sailors would often follow Gramiopia, the baby buggy, to guide their vessels home. Woo! Vizier, what is that magnificent contraption? It's a pram, my liege. A pram, eh? Attention, everyone! This is Salmon Mac, holy of holies here! From now on, crams are hereby decreed to be the ginchiest things in all creation. We love them, and you should too. That is all. The constellation known as the Great Fudgy Stick was previously Eroticus the Joybringer until a Texas school board ruling in 2003. Whoa! What is that? It's a fudgy stick, sir. They're a big hit with the kids. Fudgy sticks? Hey-ho, everyone! Salmon Mac here again! We'd like everyone to know that fudgy sticks are officially our favorite things in the world! We think they're tops! Well, that's it! Goodbye! Check it out, Max. It's Lord Salmon Max's box of power. I wish I had a box of power. Deep down, I think everyone does, Max. What's that? That is Lord Salmon Max's magnificent pyramid of corn dogs, a meticulously balanced marble of nearly 340 stinky brand corn dogs. Don't you natives know anything about your own country? Gimme, gimme, gimme! Whoops! No! Ah. <gasps> what? <gasps> oh. <gasps> A 
What is that? That thing that has defiled our pyramid of corn dogs? It's, um, my Eurosnap 3000 SRX camera, my lord. A camera, eh? Listen up, everybody. We hereby decree that cameras are the most despicable things in the world. If you see a camera, smash it into teeny tiny bits for your lord and master. That is all. Oh, blogger schnoops. And as for you, into the pit of contrition with you. Ha 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 ha! Yo. Oh, my cranklies! Vizier, more corn dogs. Right away, your wonderfulness. That was quick. Confidentially, this happens a lot, so we always have a spare. Sam and Max sure does love his corn dogs. Corn dogs? Mine, 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 mine! It's a good thing you're stuck in that jar, little buddy, or you might have caused an unholy incident. What a spread! Let's see. We've got Boar a la Ferro, Ram's Blood Jigglers, Scarab Crunch, and... Ooh, is that Scorpion Noodle Bake? I'd hate to be the poor guy on the receiving end of that righteous wrath. Hey! Hmm, graspy little fella, isn't he? You'd think his future biceps would have a little muscle tone after all that gladiating. What the? Apparently, the future is a hellish nightmare of slow motion action movie cliches. I'll be getting too old for that shit. Stop. I am so very sorry, your perfectness. Wow, that was some world-class groveling. I wonder where he trained. Hey! Rhinoplasty. That's the second largest stack of corn dogs I've ever seen. All right, Egypt boy. You can steal my silky fur and my charming cartilage, but you'll never take away my snack time indulgences. In the name of the sweet, the salty, and the cheap yellow mustard, I hereby liberate these corn dogs. <gasps> <Whoa. gasps> uh, what is that? It's a credit card, my liege. A credit card, hmm? Very well. Listen up, everyone. This is Samunak. Forget what we said before. From now on, credit cards are a scourge upon the land and our least favorite thing ever. So, if you see a credit card, rip it to shreds. What did I miss? I think you just single-handedly destroyed the foundations of the U.S. economy over a pile of corn dogs. What, again? Ooh, bad idea, little guy. You're the thing Sam and Mac hates most. I'd hate to see you torn apart by a bloodthirsty mob. <sighs> You're no fun anymore, Sam. Franklin? Again? Don't tell him nothing, Frankie. Yeah! I'd like to make another bet. Hey, it's your loss, Squeaky. I'll put a Jackson on the Simeon Sucker Punch. All right, cousins of mine, Sam has made his bet. What are your picks? I'll take the Space Ape Kidney Punch. The Simeon Scissor Kick is calling to me, Frankie. And I'll pick the, uh, Gorilla Thigh Squeeze. But first, I gotta get some cash. <gasps> Uh-oh. A credit card? Lord Sam and Mac hates credit cards. Pulverize it. Now, guys. Brought to you, as always, by our benevolent...
Don't you want in on that? They look like they've got it under control. No! Now what'll I bet? How about that funky pendant of yours? A pendant of Inquisition? But it was a gift from Samu Mac himself. An accessory, uh, what do you call it? Privilege. But if you win, you'll have that and 60 bucks! Hey, good point. I'm in. Looks like another blasphemous mole man has entered the ring to face off against Salmon Max undefeated champion Skunkape. Let's see how he does. Oh my! This one's almost over before it even had a chance to start. Skunkape's moving in for the kill. Which one of his signature moves will he use? Is it yes, yes, the Gorilla Girly Slap? And the crowd goes wild! No thigh squeeze? Ah. Gotta love the way the general uses his hands. Too bad I didn't get the rest right. Ah, jeez, I thought for sure he'd use one of them simian moves this time. Hey, no one won. Now what happens? Everyone gets their bets back and we live to bet another day, tough guy. Ooh, that's brutal. Skunkape's moving in for the kill. Which one of his signature moves will he use? Is it... Gotta love the way the general uses his hands. Too bad I didn't get the rest right. I should have known better than to go back to the gorilla moves. Ah, I thought for sure it would be the kidney punch. Right in the Labanza. Nice weather we're having. Franklin? Again? Don't tell him nothing, Frankie. Yeah! Can I, uh, borrow your thingy of Inquisition? No! I'd like to take some more of your money. Ah, jeez. I'll put a Jackson on the Simeon Sucker Punch. All right, cousins of mine, Sam has made his bet. What are your picks? I'm liking that Gorilla Girly Slap. I see a Gorilla Girly Slap in the near future! And I'll pick the, uh, Space Ape Kidney Punch. And I guess I'll just throw my pendant back in there. Looks like another blasphemous mole man has entered the ring to face off against Salmon Max undefeated champion Skunkape. Let's see how he does. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Skunkape's moving in for the kill. Which one of his signature moves will he use? Is it yes, the crowd-pleasing Simeon Sucker Punch? And the crowd goes wild. Ah, I thought for sure it would be the kidney punch. Gotta love the way the general uses his hands. Too bad I didn't get the rest right. I should have known better than to go back to the gorilla moves. Come to Papa! No! Hey, what about the cash? This accessory of privilege is all we need to get closer to the glory of Salmon Mac. Works for us. Well done, Max. Yikes! What? Just a little brain cramp. Preparations are being made. Gather more accessories of privilege so that Sam can get next to Salmon Mac. No problem. And don't forget to bring the brain screw. Yeah, yeah. Sheesh, what a nag. Who are you talking to, Max? An, um, uh, an imaginary friend. I call him Floyd J. Dalrymple. You and your wacky psychic powers. Love a salmon mac, don't say it. Toasty. Why a pyramid? Surely a sphinx of corn dogs would have been more impressive. You may have my body, you phony pharaoh, but all your corn dogs are belong to Max. Hey, Pharaoh Face, look at me! I'm dancing on the grave of your hopes and dreams. <laughs> <gasps> Is that? It's a wedge coat toaster, sir. 
A toaster, eh? Attention, everyone! This is Samun Mac, Lord of all creation! Forget what we said before. From now on, toasters are officially the most horrid, beastly things in the whole wide world! And if you see a toaster and you want to make us happy, break it into tiny little bits! Wow, that means every toaster in the world is now utterly and irrevocably destroyed! But where does that leave toaster pastries? Room temperature, little buddy. Room temperature. Hmm. In 1999, the Wedgeco Electric Company paid $15 million to purchase the naming rights of this constellation, now forever known as the Wedgeco Flying Toaster. Ooh! What is that? It's a Wedgeco Toaster, your omnipotence. A toaster? Greetings, everyone! This is Sam Mac, the Divine, speaking. From this day forward, toasters are the most exalted things in all the universe, ranking just below yours truly on the awesome meter. Just thought you should know. I've got a gift for Lord Salmon Mac. Oh yeah? I can't accept just any old thing, you know. The omnipotent one is kind of picky. What you got? I'm not giving that back to Salmon Mac. He'll think I'm a re-gifter. Is that? Yes, yes it is. Oh, Lord Salmon Mac's gonna love this. Wedgeco toasters are his favorite things in the world. So I've heard. But well, they've been so scarce since the purging. Where'd you find this one? I, uh, made it. It's amazing what you can do with a glue gun, some pipe cleaners, and a little imagination. Amazing. Well, I'll just stash this bad boy in the vault. Sam, in gratitude for your truly one-of-a-kind offering, Lord Samon Mac has ordered me to present you with one of his accessories of privilege. The medallion of superlative tithing. I don't know what to say. Gratitude would be appropriate, peon. Thank you, Sam and Mac. Hey, you're back, little brain buddy. Wait a sec. If you're here, what about... Don't overthink it, Sam. Well done, Max. Yikes! What? Just a little brain cramp. Our agents are almost in place. Obtain another accessory of privilege, so that Sam may get close to the Pharaoh. I'm all over it! Genoplasty. Look at me, Sam! I'm a low-pressure system! I'm like a cushy government job, but with thunder! Are you precipitating? Um, sure. Precipitating, that's it. Catch you later, Sal. Hail Salmon Mac. Hail Salmon Mac right back at you, Sam. Oh, brother. We should go to the old folks home and watch their rheumatism flare up. You're a sadistic little twerp, Max. Oh, the weather's turning. I can feel it. Yo, Stinky. 
Ah, again with the interruptions. Lord Salmon Mac won't be happy if I'm late, you know. Salmon Mac is mighty. Salmon Mac is grand. The brilliance of Lord, of Lord Salmon, Salmon Mac, Mac is more than, is we, can more than we can stand. Ah, ah, my poor knees. Blasphemer. Heretic alert. Heretic alert. Heretic alert. I'm not a heretic, you blithering idiot. I've got bad knees. Tell it to the pit of contrition, punk. No! I love Lord Salmon Mac! Sam and Max, in recognition of the great service you've done to your Lord and Master, I have been instructed by Salmon Mac himself to reward you with one of his accessories of privilege. The ornament of fealty! Aw, oh, he shouldn't have. As you are, everyone. Sweet hopping Horace on a two-headed asp. I've got three accessories of privilege. You know what that means, Max? We get a free hoagie on our next visit? No, it means I'm worthy of basking in the transcendent radiance of Lord Salmon Mac's divine personage. I prefer the hoagies. You don't even have a mouth. Hmm, I wonder if I should shave first. Wow, that spindly old mole woman's really holding her own against Skunk Ape. Who knew that that dame Judy Dench exterior was hiding the ninja skills of Mila Jovovich? I don't think Mila Jovovich is really a ninja, Max. I wonder how long she can keep that up. This should be fun. Stop! Who dares trespass into the inner circle of the Lord High Samun Mac? I dare, Grand Vizier Pepperpot. And we've got the bling of whatever to prove it. It appears they'll give out accessories of privilege to anyone these days. Very well. Let it be written that Samun Mac's freelance police have been granted entry into the inner circle of the Lord High Samun Mac. Maker of worlds and breather of life. Welcome, Sam and Max. Try not to bother the Lord High. He's a busy god. Try not to bother the Lord High. He's a busy god. Check it out, Max. It's Lord Sam and Max's box of power. Lord Sam and Max. Thanks for welcoming me into your inner circle. I can't believe I'm so close to your radiant gloriousness. Yes, yes, it's a great honor. Now still your tongue. We're watching the fight. He talked to me. Stop drooling, Sam. Your wonderfulness. Shh, we're busy. Sorry. Lord Sam and Mac, thanks for welcoming me into your inner circle. I... Yes, yes. He talked to me. Stop drooling, Sam. The Medallion of Tithing lets everyone know that I gave Sam and Mac a Bothell one-of-a-kind offering. I didn't technically earn this Pendant of Inquisition. Thank Ra! The Ornament of Fealty is a reminder that I must always be on the lookout for enemies of Lord Sam and Mac. Oh, brother. No way! I can't believe I even considered that! Oh, most mighty and glorious Lord Salmon Mac, I have something you might be interested in. Six Simper Tyrannus! Hey now, Missy, Junior. be careful with that thing. Sam, no! You furry fool! Well done, my wet-nosed and faithful servant. Now, finish off this wretched assassin. Isn't that a little harsh? How about we just slap her with a fine or revoke her internet privileges for a few days? Come on, Sam, don't be a jerk. I'm sorry, my liege. I can't do it. What? Ha! Paperweight, how could you let her escape? Oh, I am so very sorry, your perfectness. And you, 
You have disappointed us for the first and only time, Sam! Into the pit of contrition with you! Yes, Your Awesomeness. Yes, I shall enjoy this. Let the divine punishment begin! I've waited a lifetime for this, earth -cur. But we only imprisoned you in the penal zone a couple of hours ago. Yes, but due to the temporal differences between this dimension and the- La, la, la. Just shut up and fight. Yes, your gloriousness. Yes, your wonderfulness. Let us see what you've got. Ha! 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 A child could have seen that move coming. Hey yo! <laughs> Max, little help here. Hi yo! Oh! Did that help? A little, but do you think you can widen the zoom on these visions a bit? Maybe if I had some hands. I could fiddle with the lenses. I couldn't have done it without you, Max. But who knew Skunk Ape was so sensitive about getting dumped by paperweight? Looks like you're gonna win! That's very... Ow. Comforting. Paperweight's got a shorter fuse than those fireworks we bought from those Girl Scouts. Leave now, the fight's just getting good. That won't do me any good now. Still standing? I'm impressed. If this is all it takes, you'll be really impressed when I kick your crimson keister. Hey, Skunky, what? I've been wondering, what? Can you get free space gas with your AARP card? Ah! You clumsy off! Do you know how much that equipment costs? Ooh. Hey, Skunky! What? You sure you don't want to take a break, Skunk Ape? Why? Well, it'll be 4.30 soon. I wouldn't want you to miss the senior dinner discount at Stinky's. Stop hacking at my planetarium, you clod! So, Grandpa... I can't believe you're doing Paperweight's dirty work. What are you talking about? I don't see him in here getting all sweaty with Mole Man, do you? <laughs> The only thing Paperweight is good for is fetching me more grapes after my battles! I bet Salmon Mac really appreciates how well you follow Paperweight's orders. Paperweight? That two-bit conjurer isn't fit to pick nits out of my hide! Paperweight told me... Paperweight? That spineless cretin... Uh, don't just stand there like a drooling who man. Hit me. Oh, very amusing. Uh, come now, Sam. At least try to give our liege a few minutes of entertainment. of Omicron. You're almost as pathetic as those mole people. Well played. Uh, stop me if you've heard this one before. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> so, the mole men giving you a good fight? Don't be ridiculous. Those dreary little mole men barely get my pulse racing. It's all I can do not to double over laughing when I see them running around the arena. Hey! Liberté! Egalité! With mole! Down with the pharaoh! How dare you! Ow! Didn't any of the mole people give you a good fight? Well, that desiccated old mole woman had some fight in her. Certainly a lot more than the male of her species. Hey! With moles! Down with the pharaoh! Ow! About those mole people. Don't talk to me about those pathetic little fur bags. Hey! With moles! Down with the pharaoh! Ow! It must have hurt when Paperweight dumped you, huh? What are you talking about? You know, when he ditched your little alliance of the B-list supervillains. What? Paperweight didn't break the alliance? I broke it! I dumped him! That's a lie! Ah! My eyes! Hey, Skunky! What? Paperweight broke your heart when he broke the alliance, didn't he? Hold you! I broke up with him! Liar! Ah! My eyes! So, Grandpa... Ah! You clumsy off! Do you know how much that equipment costs? Hey, Skunky! What? About those mole people. Don't talk to me about those pathetic little fur bags. Hey! With moles! Down with the pharaoh! La la la. So cool. Hey, Skunky! What? Must have hurt when Paperweight dumped you, huh? What are you talking about? You know, when he ditched your little alliance of the B-list supervillains. What? Paperweight didn't break the alliance? I broke it! I dumped him! That's a lie! Ah! My eyes! hi -ya. Oh! oh. Ah. Finish him! I have had enough of you! I knew you could do it, Sam! Even though I may have secretly placed some side bets against you! I couldn't have done it without you, Max. Who knew Skunk Ape was so sensitive about getting dumped by paperweight? Must we do everything around here? If you will not submit to our champion, then we will personally have the pleasure of scraping you from the papyrus of reality! Try not to ruin my face, Sam! And don't think we haven't noticed you meddling with our stolen toys! Ah, oh, Crocodung! Now, insect, strike me if you can! I can't, your gloriousness! That's more like it. Why so quiet, Sam? Bastet got your tongue! <laughs> Go ahead, hit me! Sam and Mac, you're really... Yes? A heck of a guy! <laughs> <laughs> Max, give me a hand here. But I don't have any hands, Sam. Or magic toys. When has that stopped you before? All right, all right. I'll see what I can do. You know what I could go for right now? 
Some cheesy fries. Not helping, Max. <laughs> Any ideas? I was kind of hoping you'd have some, little buddy. <laughs> I got nothing. Go ahead. Make my epoch. Salmon Mac is stupid. Salmon Mac is lame. <laughs> You're next, brain. <laughs> Salmon Mac is handsome. Salmon Mac is cute. When we think of Salmon Mac, we give a big salute. Careful, Kerr! You almost hate me! <laughs> Salmon Mac is mighty! Salmon Mac is grand! The brilliance of Lord Salmon Mac is more than we can stand. Kneeling won't save you now, traitor! Salmon Mac is handsome! Salmon Mac is cute! When we think of Salmon Mac, we give a big so- uh. Loot? Never be a grand vizier now. Ooh, have I got a headache. Hey, did I just miss out on one of those reality makeover capers? Yep, you were pretty much useless through the whole thing. Dang! Don't worry, though. I saved the day all by myself. Even though I had my hands, legs, and all my internal organs tied behind my back. Hey, nice work, little buddy. Now hurry up and put my brain back in my body. This jar's starting to fog up. There you are, Max. Good as, uh, new. Ooh, it's tight in here. All that demon broth must have fattened up my brain. We'll get you on a steady diet of brain-shrinking reality shows tomorrow. Now, let's stow this troublemaking toy box someplace safe before another delusional jerkwad gets his hands on it. Aside from me, you mean. Sam is coming! Sam is coming! Sam is coming! You don't have to repeat yourself. And besides, I'm right here. Actually... This is just like that dream I had last night. I wonder if he studied for his finals. Why don't you ask them? Max? Yes? Shouldn't I be waking up about now? Shouldn't I be waking up now? <laughs> a good question from a good dog. And one that you are no doubt asking yourself even now. Along with, who is the ominous Dr. Norrington? How did Monsieur Papierweight survive for over a century? And what is the dealio with all those naked Sams? We'll have answers of a sort to these questions in our next chapter. Until then, my friends, sleep well.